I actually was floating the idea. I was like, is there a, um, a recall? Is there, you know, any kind of recall now that we've awoken the giant? Is there any kind of recall system? So they're kind of looking into that. But, you know, I remember posting, um, well, it was before the election, so probably September time period, I saw an interview with the Moms Demand Action, Shannon Watts, and mm -hmm. she was talking about how much money they were uh, pouring into Virginia, $2.5 million that they alone were pouring into Virginia. And I'm sitting there, you know, it's all about the messaging, and it's all about um, – and when, when I take that messaging a step further, I wanted to tell you about this. Um, September, I want to say September, October, I went to uh, the New York Times deal book. Did we talk about this before? No, but go no. ahead. Yeah. So this is a one-day conference. It was huge. It was amazing. I felt like almost like a spy being in there because I, I swear I was the only conservative, me and Chris Chang. I... Uh, I asked to take somebody with me because I wasn't going to go sit on this 90 minute uh, task force with CEOs talking about corporate activism. So real quick, basically if you saw the Dick's piece that I did on CBS Sunday morning, yep. it was talking about how he admitted that they lost $250 million, a quarter of a billion dollars they lost. And he's willing to do that because he feels like the gun issue is something that he's willing to take the moral high ground on. Now, that's exactly what this conversation was. They had every town was in there. There was a couple of other advocates. There were two fathers from Parkland. Uh, and then there was me, Chris Chang, and four CEOs from uh, different groups from Royal Caribbean, Levi's, City Group, and another new company that the guy was from Google. But, uh, yeah, they, are, they have all drank the Kool-Aid. They looked at us. They talked to us like we were, you know, one woman, one activist, uh, was very harsh and talked to us like we were idiots. And uh, well, and then some, the Parkland dads too. They talked to us like we were idiots. But um, they just have drank the Kool Aid. They can't hear. They can't see. They can't see anything past what guns got to take the guns away. Got to take the guns away. And these CEOs are prepared to move their corporations in that. If you heard. Uh, right before that, there was 150 CEOs of major uh, corporations that sent an, an, a letter to the Senate saying you have to do something about gun violence. Mm. Um, I'm like, okay, let's do something about gun violence. Let's go ahead and put education back in our schools, firearms education. That's what I want to do. You know, when I feel like education over legislation is actually what's going to make us safer. But anyway, back to prepping for this. This is why I was so freaking scared. Uh, when I was prepping for this, I was talking to a gentleman who was explaining what, what shareholder resolutions do. So basically, a shareholder will bring a resolution to the board and say, let's use Yeti and the NRA. I don't know if this, I can, I can see this is how it's happened. Now that I, I have seen this, I, I can see a shareholder resolution going to the Yeti board and saying, Yeti, we want to do something about gun violence, and if you don't sever your ties with the NRA, we are going to launch a social media storm. We are going to turn all our people loose, and we are going to destroy your brand. So Yeti, from a business decision, they're like, okay, all I have to do is just stop having a relationship with the NRA, and I don't have all this headache. So they're doing that. The left, whether it be about guns, whether it be about environment, whether it be about abortion, the left, the, the liberal side is doing that 300 to 400 times a year, whereas the conservative side is doing it to 20 to 40 times a year. We aren't even in the same ballpark. We aren't even, we think we're at the game, but we're in the parking lot.